Hey everyone, today we are in Changu, Bali and we came to visit Sangai Watch. This is a project from Gary and his brother where they placed hundreds of plastic trapping machines across rivers and streams here in Bali. And with all these plastic prevented from entering the oceans, they just purchased a couple of precious plastic sheet presses to transform plastic waste into precious, valuable material. <laughs> Very good, man. How good are you? Good to see you. All right, so here we are. This is Gary. He's now going to give us a little tour of the facility and explain a little bit what Sangai Watch is. Hey guys, welcome. This is here at HQ at Sangai Watch. We're here on a mission to clean Bali's waterways um, by installing simple solutions, simple barriers to stop plastics from ending up in the ocean starting here in our rivers. We actually started in my parents' garage. Um, you know, now this is one of our six facilities here on Bali. So come check it out. Yes, yeah, so actually, you know, started with a tiny little space um, and then we needed to you know, expand and expand and expand because there were just so much plastic that we're collecting from the rivers. We often focus on like, you know, the dirtiest river, um, the dirtiest mangroves. And, you know, one of the biggest questions when we're doing a lot of crazy cleanups is where do we actually bring things to? So that this is our final facility. We're ready to turn plastics into products and we operate five other facilities that are just sorting centers, um, you know, where plastic come in, wet from the river, and then we have a sorting table manually sorted um, so that we can process the plastics. All of this here is uh, sandals. Um, it's a pretty big mountain, probably about 30,000 sandals. Why are they so much of it in Bali? About 11% of what we collect is foam, sandals, um, you know, this material that is not recyclable here in Indonesia. Ultimately, here at Sungai Watch, you know, we look at every single waste stream as a resource. We're dealing with the worst type of plastics out there. It's dirty, it's been sitting in the nature for 15, 30 years. And if we can upcycle, you know, it's been sitting in nature for 15, 30 years, come up with a realistic solution, I think then we can take any type of waste. From cleaning, you know, illegal landfills, um, literally, you know, mountains of open dumping on the side of rivers, to plastic flowing through. Typically, the plastic flowing in rivers that our barriers catch is clean. Actually, here it doesn't smell, which is yeah. relatively good, um, because a lot of this plastic is actually being cleaned from the river, from the waterway, from the ocean. Um, so that's already provides a secondary, a first cleaning. Um, and then we do, you know, sort of a secondary cleaning. This is our uh, washing room. So we have, um, you know, a washing line here. Um, that we run our plastics through, you know, then we have smaller machines that we've actually um, engineered ourselves, uh, you know, just from seeing the movement, we started with like a little blue drum and we were moving our hands, we we're like, oh, this works, like, what if we put a little dynamo on, on top of it, gearbox, you know, maybe add some, some things to splash the plastics around, so we actually cut out some tires, um, and that's now our modular little washer that we have at all of our facilities. So this is plastic bags, bailed, uh, coming straight up from one of our facilities. Um, you know, it's, it is very dirty. You can see just the quality and the, 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 the moisture, um, you know, a lot of mud, a lot of uh, organic content within it. So it has to go through washing, sometimes two washing cycles um, to make sure that we can then press it. It is 30% of what we collect. Um, Bali has a ban on single-use plastic bags and with our barriers, with our cleanups, we can really analyze, you know, what are the biggest types of plastics out there. Right. So every single day, every single barrier that we, uh, that we collect, you know, is an opportunity of collecting data and that's what we've been really focusing on. Um, at Sunai Watch, we have a, you know, big database of about 30,000 products that we can, so we actually scan every single piece of sachet, every shampoo bottle, um, every aluminum can. These plastic bags don't have branding around them. They're th still you know, about 30% of what we collect. So it's been very difficult to sort of finger point who should be responsible for the bags. But when it comes down to branded plastic, you know, we can have a real conversation with the brands to try to at least put pressure to move away from single use plastics. Cleaning rivers is not what we want to be doing. You know, our dream is to have every single river clean on the island of Bali and focus on other environmental issues. So this is really disaster relief effort. You know, if, in, if we were to sell a kilo of plastic bags to industrial recycling in Surabaya in, in Java, it would cost about 1,500 rupiah a kilo 
But if we are to upcycle it into sheets, into products, you know, there's a lot more mar margin for us to then fund back the cleanup organization. So once plastics has been, have been you know, washed, then, you know, then we have to solar, color sort them per color. Um, so this is you know, a very manual effort of actually um, sorting every single color before you know, we can dry them further using the sun. We still don't have a proper industrial dryer uh, or a machine dryer, so if anybody has an idea on precious plastic um, And so basically this is our, our press studio. Um, so we have two hot presses from precious plastic. Um, and this right now we're about to do a plastic bag slab, um, you know, color by color. Um, we put around 15 kilos of plastic bags, press it, and then have our first sample sheet. Um, and then, you know, repress it to get a much finer product. This is our six millimeter, um, you know, the, the sheet that we've mastered the most and that we've produced the most of. Um, we sell it for about 25 to 30 euros, 450,000 rupiah. If you know the conversion, you can do it. Um, these ones, you actually are not yet to sell them, but they would be a lot more expensive since it's two centimeters. And then, you know, a three centimeter, which is about quite heavy, uh, that would even be more. But, you know, I think economically, in order to fund back the full operation of the cleanup, you know, the actual treatment of the waste, the sorting, the pressing, um, it does require a lot of economics. Hey everyone, for those of you new to the channel, we are Precious Plastic and we design and develop recycling solutions for people around the world to start recycling. And just like Gary and his siblings, we have thousands of organizations all around the world recycling through Precious Plastic. So if this is your jam, make sure to like and subscribe so you can get notified for all the new videos coming out on a weekly basis. Um, at the moment, we've been running everything through our foundation, which has kept us afloat to upcycle as much of the plastics that we um, collect, but now we're ready to you know, step up. We're creating a set structure, social enterprise, but then really focus on the product side, which we're really excited about to actually, you know, can make, finally have some finished products to then have a little bit more margin to then, you know, really pay back and fund more cleanup efforts. We're currently working on our um, shredding studio. We have a big monster shredder here, which is super useful to shred a lot of things that we have. Um, we're just working on it. Um, this is entirely going to be made from sheets. And then this um, new room here that we just finished building is going to be our CNC room. And you know, any day really we should be receiving it so that we can take these raw materials and just you know, cut anything out of. So we're really excited to have our own CNC in house. Again, this is more of a construction site at the moment. Uh, things are always moving in and out, but um, you know, really excited to take our production of sheets to the next level and um, really to see you know, what we can do with low value plastics from the rivers of Bali and start turning them into actual products. Yeah. Actually also, awesome. we can do this before. Cool. Okay. All right. Cool. So here we are. Very excited for having a little chat with you. Yeah, why don't we just start from what you guys do here, a bit more in details, your story. Yeah, yeah. And I know you have some brothers as well involved. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, like my brother and sister and I, um, we grew up on the island of Bali. We've been here for 20 years and, you know, sort of year by year, we were seeing the progression of our beaches and our coastlines, you know, being filled up with plastic. So we were like the young activist 14 years ago when I was 14 years old started doing beach cleanups around the island only to realize that you know beach cleanups were not the solution mm -hmm. on doing a little bit more research we realized that 90 percent of plastics you know in the ocean come from rivers and streams land-based sources and rivers are the perfect connection point between life on land and the ocean in 2017 we had a crazy idea of going down one of the world's dirtiest rivers on a boat made from recycled plastic mm -hmm. um, this is the Chita river in indonesia um, it goes right through the city of Jakarta, the capital city, wow. where Gap, H&M, you know, Zara, a lot of the fast and fashion brands were doing all of their dyes on factories alongside the Cheetah Room, oh, wow. so the river can turn black, red, um, and so we had a crazy idea of going down it on two plastic bottle kayak with my brother, um, creating a crazy campaign uh -huh. to show people and to make plastic pollution on front page news. That trip went viral, got the attention of the Indonesian president. Uh, four months later, you know, we met up with them and launched Indonesia's biggest cleanup and deploying 7,000 military troops to clean the river. That was 2017. Okay. And since then, you know, I think our 
minds have experienced such shocking, um, you know, probably some of the worst things that we've ever experienced in our lives. Um, you know, plastic filled river, at, at every 300 meter you would see these illegal landfills burning. And then, you know, the little kids were just jumping around like nothing was wrong. Um, and I think, so, you know, from there I was like, how can we do something in our backyard here in Bali to start cleaning our rivers? So we started to develop, you know, and collaborate with different engineers um, to come up with a barrier. Um, and so we have different models, um, you know, using very simple technology, um, sometimes a PVC pipe, metal grid, um, very similar to the precious plastic approach, uh -huh. uh, you know, thinking, um, you know, like very low cost, open source, anybody can do it. Low tech, no low tech. Low tech, exactly. Um, and so now we have 160 barriers around the island, wow. um, which our team cleans up every single day. It can be a small two meter stream uh, wide, or it can be a 40 meter size river. Okay. Um, and so the idea is that Bali is made up of all of these villages. If we can put it at the exit of the village or between the border of two villages, then we will know where the plastics come from, who is the biggest polluter. Um, ultimately, the idea is to get almost a competition between village to village as to who can have the cleanest river. Okay. Um, and these barriers can collect data and allow us to know what we can do to better start cleaning rivers. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, you know, they're a symbol, like villages, uh, we work with a lot of high priests here in Bali using Hindu, you know, the religion here on the island to try to influence, you know, better ways of not throwing waste, of managing our waste. Batman is uh, one of our heroes at Sunai Watch. He runs our Tabanan uh, chapter, which is a full region in Bali. Batman is a high priest using, you know, religious cultural practices to stop plastic pollution. Okay. <laughs> and um, it's been amazing to see local government enforce their own regulations. So in some of the villages, you know, some of the local chiefs have imposed fines um, yeah. and they can be making, you know, $2,000 a year on fine. Wow. Um, and this is, and, you know, they charge about um, like $10 to about $15 a fine, which is a lot of money here in the Indian in And that's just for anyone Anybody polluting. Anybody polluting in rivers. In rivers. I was at one of your cleanup actually last week uh, as part of the FabFest um, challenge, which you can see a video in the link below. And it was really amazing to see how it was just a fun activity, right? You know, most of the people there were locals. And I see you also here, uh, you work primarily with locals, right? Yeah, so we, we have an amazing team. You know, we've grown very exponentially, but now we, we employ 120 people here on Bali. Um, and, you know, they're Balinese, they're from different parts of Indonesia. Um, you know, the idea with the economics of plastics, you know, so move and change the needle a little bit. You know, if it can be more, financially sustainable for somebody to work in a sustainable startup than it can be for somebody to be at, at a bar serving in Changu. Mm -hmm. um, that would be the, the ideal dream. So we're trying to always push you know, our salaries to be, um, to be nice and compared to like in the tourism hospitality because that's ultimately well, you know, yeah. what we're competing. <laughs> One last little break just to highlight how difficult it can be to run an open source global recycling project. As you can see here, with Sangai Watch and Gary and his siblings, you know, they went on a website, they learned a ton, they really got started with recycling, you know, using precious plastic free open source knowledge. However, when it came the time to build the machines, to start their projects, of course, they contacted people locally through our ecosystem and platforms. As you can imagine, it's not the easiest business model out there. And that's really much why I would encourage any one of you out there to go on support.preciousplastic.com and find the best way for you to support Precious Plastic so that we can continue our work and supporting the next wave of recyclers all around the world. I'm kind of guessing that a lot of the people that are watching this are now thinking, wow, I would love to do this as well, right? In my own country, you mm. know, cleaning my own rivers and my yeah. own environment. But of course, that's the whole money side of things, you know, and I'm very curious now to dive a bit deeper into, you know, what's the funding mechanism for this and how do you make sure that this can sustain and grow right, right. over time? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, we, we started with our, with our very own money to launch the first barrier, um, you know, just out of passion, wanting to do something about it. Um, very quickly, um, you know, had a very simple model of like having sponsors, sponsor set barrier for a set amount, which sponsors not only the barrier, but the collection and the upcycling of it, okay. um, you know, through having now having 160 barriers in Bali, um, where we don't have 160 sponsors anymore, but we focus on bigger partnerships. Um, so the way that we want to scale is through like a village model, 
uh, which is fully replicable anywhere in the world. The, the, the reason, you know, they sponsor Barrier, it's great marketing for them. Now that we have some really good results on plastic bag sheets, um, we're really excited to uh, have our first investor to then allow us to upcycle or to upgrade our facility, mm -hmm. get a CNC machine, um, you know, really start getting a little bit more industrial machines to then take our production to the next level. Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, precious plastic has been so crucial in, in testing with the material. Mm. Um, the hot press, you know, now we have two, but we really needed only one in the beginning to start doing samples, literally taking every single piece of trash that we have, run it through the press okay. because we have so much plastics. Uh -huh. And, you know, literally every day we would wake up, uh, okay, what ha let's see what happened in the press. You know, almost like cooking a cake. Yeah. Um, sometimes it didn't work. <laughs> sometimes it works. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, it just is... It's test, trial and error, trial and error. Yeah. I think over the last year of having our first press now, um, you know, it's just been trial and error for a year. Yeah. And now, you know, we're solidly having good results. And uh, yeah, thank you to, to Precious Plastic and your amazing <laughs> machines. Nice. Thank you for taking the, so for pushing the R&D forward, you know, like, yeah. you know, I think that's what we need. More people testing, pushing R&D really to the limits and then yeah. sort of pulling back this knowledge so that we can share it with the world. Tell us a bit about, you know, how Precious Plastic got into Sangai Watch and how, you know, you yeah. got the machines here, why you get in this machine yeah, yeah. in here, what the va what's the value that Precious mm. Plastic brings to Sangai Watch? I think, you know, very quickly on, uh, when you start to collect trash from a river, um, you start to sort and you start to see, you know, the bracket of how much trash actually ends up in landfill, the residual bracket. You know, when we started, it was about 60% of the trash was sending back to landfill. Um, you know, and you're like, we don't, didn't have any infrastructure, just we're sorting on the floor. Mm. Um, and I think the need of doing research, figuring out, oh, what can we do with this? What can we do with that? It, it, it's uh, having precious plastic out there, the platform, so much time was spent, you know, and actually, okay, oh, you can actually shred the material, you know, just like getting, getting educated right. about what is recycling and how, how, you know, how you guys have done it, like home recycling and, and taking it, uh, making it, possible anywhere. In order to get to our first sample, you know, we started with a little oven and a tiny little press that was like a bataco, um, so a brick press uh -huh. that didn't do so much good. Uh, you know, we could only get so far. Um, and then, uh, you know, got the first press, um, which was a giant step um, to then allow us to, you know, really play around with every single material and really test and test and test. I think it, it took about a good month um, to get to our first good sheets. Okay. Yeah. So these are first slabs, fresh from the press. We then repress them again to get a final product that is a lot uh, better and a lot more, you know, fine. Um, so this, for example, is a sheet made from plastic bags, pretty heavy, you know, must have 12 kilos here. Um, but the three centimeter, you know, probably is around 20 kilos, so a lot more heavier. 7 a.m., um, you know, we have four guys um, that work all day, and then we have um, so to operate both sheet press to you know load, unload, yeah. um, to also finish off some of the sheets, um, you know cut them, um, shred some of the material, and then we have um, actually two guys that do night shift um, to, because one of the problems is that we have so much plastic yeah. that like in order to get to you know the demand that we have, um, we need to produce, you know, roughly 15 to 20 sheets a day. Do you have any, any, any data on the amount of plastic being fed to the sheet presses here? Um, yeah, so yes, it would be around, uh, around 300 kilos a day of okay. plastic um, bags, m mostly, because that's what we're focusing on, uh, being, being pressed every single day. Wow, yeah, that's so a lot of plastic. Quick, yeah, it's a lot, yeah. Wow, so that's once a lot you, of bags. Yeah, a lot of bags. <laughs> like Goodness. that big three centimeter sheet uses 4,000 bags. 4,000 bags, yeah. wow. Which is insane. Wrapping up, I wanted to uh, sort of uh, understand a bit better, you know, how you see Sangai Watch and Precious Plastic? What's the relationship there? I think, I mean, ideally, you know, I don't know if this is possible, but like we want to be a sister organization of Precious Plastic in terms of the river cleanup aspects. Yeah. Uh, you know, like if we could open source our berry models, make them available yeah. through the Precious Plastic community. Um, teach people how to not only upcycle the material, but how to actually source the material from the environment. If you're in communities or in areas in the world where there's a lot of plastics in the environment, maybe there are ways that we can simply help you upcycle it. Do you have any messages for the big precious plastic community out there watching us and, you know, 
right now thinking how the heck can I start a Sakai <laughs> watch in my town? Nice dude. I think, uh, you know, we really have such an important deadline almost, you know, like it's almost like we've already destroyed our planet and we're hitting the point of no return. So we really have to look at ourselves very differently, you know, asking the bigger questions, what is our part in all of this? Yeah. Yes, and maybe, you know, opening your own chapter of precious plastic in your own community, but you know, sometimes it, it, it can even be easier than that and starts in individually with yourselves, um, going out in nature, you know, maybe going out and doing a river cleanup by yourself or with friends, that's easier than potentially starting. And then maybe that starts getting you excited about what's next, you know? Um, I think that, you know, we can all do something um, starting today and we have to do something about it because this plastic issue is going to be increasing and increasing and, and it's not set to stop anytime soon. Well, yeah, Gary, thank you very much. It was thank such you, a man. pleasure to have a chat with you. Thank and you man, this is an amazing work. I'm, I'm super hyped. All right, so that's it with this video today. I have learned so much today from Gary and the team here and it's really inspiring to see, you know, all the incredible work going on here and how plastic that is dirty and nasty from rivers and ocean can actually be turned into something very highly valuable also thanks to a couple of precious plastic sheet presses out there. So very much looking forward to see more from Sangai Watch and I hope to see you in the next video. Ciao!